Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you for viewing and watching another IP Tut. My name is Philly Phil. Now, today I will be showing you how to use the Foundry's camera tracker as well as the concept behind the whole fairy effect uh, video. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to show it to you this one right here. Um, I mean, as you can see, I'm kind of just going through. You can see like this whole little light source with a little bit of particles going through. It while it goes up to the door, turns around, and comes back. Um, and I'm 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 gonna go over that with you. I'm not gonna go directly into the actual particles and stuff like that because that's actually very time consuming and we'd be sitting here for about four hours. But I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you guys through the concept and my my thought process is actually completing that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, what we have right now is actually I have the shortened clip. Um, of that, and let me see if I can scrub through a little different sections of it. Cause I actually don't want that. I want something better than that. Let's see. Um, let's see. Here we go. We'll stop here. So we'll start it from here, and we'll start here. Okay. So right now we have our footage, and um, I'm gonna let you guys know real quick. The best part of uh, doing, you know, CG work or whatever you want to call it, is to 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 make sure you shoot and frame your footage as if the 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 object or items are already there that way uh when you actually place them in there they don't seem to stick out like a sore thumb um and that way it just seems more real and that's actually a common mistake that I see a lot of uh beginners making they don't they don't frame it and shoot it as if that item's actually in the frame so I mean as you can see my focal point or the center of my image is kind of here and I know where it's actually going to be um, during this entire shot so I mean the the sidewalk and stuff like that is kind of my guide so it's actually it actually turned out a lot better than I thought and plus it was actually my first shot at it so you know so let's go ahead and actually get started so right now we have our footage as you can see um, framed as if it was actually in the shot, kind of moving along and whatnots and whatnots. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the Foundry's camera tracker, which is actually a really good um, plugin. I love it. It took me a while to actually get it, but now that I have it, um, I'm going to be using it a lot, especially for a few upcoming videos. Um, and this is what it looks like. I mean, this is Foundry camera tracker and whatnots, whatnots. Um, and I'm going to just go ahead and go through this a bit. Matt Source, not really sure what that does, but we're not going to worry about that. Analyzing range, now this obviously, is, you know, you can do the whole thing or a specific range. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a specific range. Uh, of just this right here. Now let's just go ahead and save that real quick. I, I, like I say, I, I don't know if I say it in all my videos, but save often. Save often. Um... And so, like, after every move, I'll save it. Okay, so anyways, I'll display tracks. That's fine. Track quality, yada, yada, yada. That's fine. That's fine. And what we'll do is we'll just... It's actually just three simple clicks. Track features. So what this is going to do, this is actually going to track all this stuff right here and go frame by frame by frame. And it's actually moving a little slow because I'm recording as I'm doing this. And so After Effects isn't using up all the RAM. There's other uh, stuff going on. But as you can see, it's still doing a decent job at it, so that's cool. It's actually not going to mess up the track. Um, and you can see it's tracking these points uh, as the camera itself moves. And here pretty soon, as it gets to the end, um, it will actually track backwards as well. Um, just to make sure that all the tracks that it's done before are correct. So that's kind of a really neat thing for it to do. It double tracks it, if you will. Um, I'm actually going to pause the, the record right now and wait until we actually get done or start on our way back to um, actually get this done. Well, you know what? It's almost done at the end. So I'll wait until our on our way back to actually um, to cut it and jump cut. All right. So as you can see, we're about to reach the end here and it's tracking backwards. So here we go. So now we're tracking backwards and it's checking. It's checking. Everything seems to be right so far. I'm going to jump cut right now. So give me two seconds. Okay, so as you can see, we're almost done here. Um, just finishing up the tracks. And it is now done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click Solve Camera. And what that's going to do, that's going to create a camera and a null object 
or wait, not the null object just yet. What it's actually going to do is do some math, figure out exactly what's going on, try to fill. Here we go. Okay, so now it's solved. That's fine. That's fine. And I also heard that if this is a lower number, it's better. I think. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. Um, but it's fine for what we're doing because it's only a test shot anyway. So that's fine. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. It's solved. That's solved. That's fine. Now, as you can see, now all these tracks is turned green. Here goes a few red ones, but we won't worry about those. Actually, let's just delete those. One red one, another red one. Delete, delete. Um, they're not going to cause too much of an issue, but I just don't want them to be there. So that's fine. So that's fine. All that's good. Everything seems to track. Oh, I see another red one up here. You guys see it? No, not that one. That one. There we go. All right. So, oh, another red one. Uh, I'm not really sure what the red ones are going to do to it. I didn't delete them the first time and it seemed to work just fine. Just deleting them now. Um, and so here we go. So now everything is checked. Everything, everything seems to be fine. Now what we're going to do is go create scene. And that's going to create our null and our, and our actual camera, 3D camera, which just popped up right now. So here we go. So now we have our camera and we have our, our null object and everything should be in place. Here we go that's fine that's fine and as you can see the null object just sticks there um, so now what we're gonna do is let's see we'll create an item let's see let's just drop this in here real quick so we'll drop the logo in there let's go ahead and scale it down and make it we'll hit F4 to toggle our switches oh well it's already on there but go down here as well toggle your switches turn it into a 3d layer we can also go ahead and scale that down just a little bit more it's just a little too big as you can see the IP logo is actually stuck it's actually parented to the null object uh, or just in the position where the null object is and what we're going to do is we're just going to drop it down right there move it on over to about there push it in the Z space not too much here we go. Let's see what happens. Where is it sticking at? Okay, that's still too close to the camera where I want it to be. So we'll just push it back a little further. Let's see where it sits. Up, oh, almost. A little further. A little up. And then we'll hit W to actually rotate it on its Y axis right here. Bam. There we go. And rotate it on its Z axis real quick. There we go to kind of line it up with those lines right here. So it's actually, oops, so it's actually right here we go. That seems to be better. And then we can actually go ahead and scale it back up now that we actually got it. Ooh, oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, it actually sticks the logo there. So as the camera itself moves around in 3D space, click off of that um, you can see it kind of sticks in there and gets going um, and I mean as you can see the possibilities itself is actually endless I plan on using this a lot more like I said I've only actually done it once and that was with the test fairy effect um, but there's actually a, f a few other videos I have planned that will definitely uh, be utilizing that so as you can see very simple to use everything else like that now let's actually get over to the actual light source itself. I'm going to run through that really quick for you guys. Um, let's go ahead and turn everything off. Okay, so right now what I have is I actually have the full clip, which um, once again, I planned as if it was actually already in the scene. I knew I was going to have it come up over my gate, kind of go along the sidewalk, flying through the air, come to the door, turn around, and then go back. Right now, it's 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 actually a handheld shot, and I could have probably stabilized it, but I wasn't really worried about that. I kind of wanted to test the the boundaries of the actual camera tracker, and uh, see exactly how well that thing works. And let me say it performed extremely extremely well. Um, there was a part right here where it jibbles a bit. If you see that right there, um, that it actually didn't catch very well. Um, if you go back and watch the original, you can see where it actually doesn't catch it right here. Um, but other than that, extremely well done. Um, I I love this plugin. Okay, so like I said, we have the camera, we have the null object that it created, which is all right there. 
and then let's go ahead and turn off the actual null object. And we have a particle system, which is trap code particular. Um, you can you can't really see it in this shot. Uh, let's see. Hmm. If I turn off the background, here we go. Okay, so as you can see, we have the particle system right there, and that's actually linked to a light renamed emitter A, and then the particle system is set to lights itself and then that way any lights in the scene it will connect to it and you can kind of follow it in 3d space and then the light or slash emitter is actually uh, keyframed throughout the scene to actually go through and um, move about as the actual fairy if you will um, and as you can see it kind of floats around right there uh, and then darts out flies up goes down and then shoots out of the, the actual frame um, and that's what that is and then what we have connected to that let's go back on this side turn that back off what we have connected to that is there's actually two particles there's like a dust type particle things that can actually come off of it so there's actually two particles and then there's one light source that acts as the actual fairy light and then there's another one that actually is meant to colorize the actual scene so as you can see this thing kind of just floats around and goes through it um, does what it has to do and then up down and then up and out of the frame and let me go ahead and turn this back on as you can see it moves as if it's actually in the scene Let's see if I can get it to go a little slower like I said if you want to see the actual video go ahead and uh, check it out there will be a link and uh, there goes that and that and that just darts out and then that like I was saying that second optical flares oh which I probably didn't even say what it actually was um, it's actually optical flares video copilot op optical flares amazing plugin once again um, allows you to create lens flares and stuff like that and light sources uh, kind of sort of and it's just amazing check it out um, so there's actually two the first one for the actual fairy is set to screen and then um, they actually colorize the background. It's set to to soft light, and it kind of makes it as if you know there's actual light in there, uh, as you can see. Set it to soft light, and then it kind of colorizes it, and and it's like false light, you know, being projected onto the walls and the mat and stuff like that. Not so much. I didn't spend too much time on it actually, but like I said, it was only a test. Um, but that's just basically the the workflow for creating the particle fairy effect like I said you definitely want to spend more time on all of this if you're doing it uh, for an actual video but this was only a test so yeah well uh, that's it thank you for watching I'm Phil uh, hit me up on Facebook and follow me on Twitter if you have any questions let me know what's going on um, anything usually I answer all questions thank you for watching you guys take care Thank <laughs> you.